Good morning. And welcome to St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Syracuse, New York, as we celebrate the 12th Sunday after Pentecost in person and online. Please know that however you've joined us, your presence enriches our worship. Wisdom prepares a feast, sets her table, and invites us all to come and eat her bread and drink her wine. The first chapter of John's Gospel owes much to the biblical tradition that imagined wisdom as existing before anything was created and having a role in the work of creation. Christ, the wisdom of God, today invites us to eat his flesh and drink his blood. John's Gospel includes no account of the institution of the Lord's Supper, but here we can't help hearing Jesus' words as an invitation to the meal of bread and wine that we share in him. I invite you now into a time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to God and seeking God's abundance, I invite you to stand as you're able as we confess our sin using the words that are on the screen. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God and Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished by Jesus, the worker of miracles. There is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. You may be seated. I invite you all to join me in this morning's gathering hymn.
love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Ever loving God, your Son gives himself as the living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. For everything in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Confusion and misunderstanding 
to anger as Jesus continued to tell him that he has come down from heaven and will raise them up on the last day. Wow, they've known Jesus most of his life. He's Joe and Mary's kid from down the street. How could he be the one sent from God to save the world? They just didn't understand that God uses the ordinary to create the extraordinary, that God can and does work through us, even though, even through our failures and our inadequacies, taking the mess that we often make of things and turning it into an act of love, a message that can relate to others, a meal for the life of the world. Today, we begin once more with the words that ended the gospel reading last week, as Jesus tells all who listen, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. It's really not so surprising that the religious leaders question his claim. How can Jesus give us his flesh to be eaten? Yet, even though the leaders are angry, Jesus doubles down on his claim, telling them, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Well, it does really sound a bit barbaric if you think about it. Perhaps our own reaction is not so different from those of Jesus' time. The language of John's Gospel uses the Greek word sarx, which means flesh rather than body, and the Greek word trogo, which means to gnaw or gobble. It brings to mind the sounds of an animal gnawing on the flesh and bones of its prey. Can you picture that in your head? The language itself is raw and probably meant to shock our sensibilities and grab our attention. Perhaps, however, it helps to know that the word made flesh is the same word given physical and visible form in the sacraments. This is why Jesus speaks of giving his own flesh and blood. You see, in Hebrew, flesh and blood is an expression that refers to the whole person, their heart, mind, spirit, feelings, hopes, dreams, fears, and concerns, absolutely everything inside and out the whole self. Biblical scholar Robert Kassar suggests that Jesus tells his listeners that they literally need to take him into themselves and make Jesus a part of their own essence. He writes, as Christians who long for abundant life, we have no other way to such a life except by taking Jesus in, having him become so intermingled with our own being that we cannot separate one from the other. Of course, this language leads us not surprisingly to the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper, end quote. In the reading from Proverbs, wisdom invites us, come, Eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. We come to the Lord's table because it's a matter of life and death. <coughs> because Jesus, the bread from heaven, has the power to shape the way we live. Because his meal truly offers life, eternal life, which begins now living in a relationship with God through Jesus. Another word for eating is that of consuming. 
We are all consumers eating up far more than just food. We consume all sorts of things from wine to music, from toothpaste to electronics, from sneakers to household products. As a consumer society, we're often also consumed by the things that have nothing to do with nourishment at all. We're consumed by sports, perhaps giving all of our time to a favorite team or game. We're consumed by our favorite TV shows, often binge watching old episodes. We're consumed by exercise and dieting, always struggling to obtain that perfect body. Today, Jesus reminds us that to be in a relationship with him, we must consume him. And not only him, but everything about him. His words, his teaching, his grace, his love, his relationship with God, his very flesh and blood. You see, when we consume all that Jesus is, we abide in him and he in us. We live in an intimate connection to him, and he lives in such a connection to us. Through this ever-shocking, abundant, life-giving gift, of which we don't deserve, nor could we ever earn, we're reminded of more than Jesus' death on the cross. Through his meal, given for us, we're reminded of Jesus' life among us. We're reminded of his healing, literally giving new life to those in need, of his teaching, showing us the way to everlasting life, of his words, leading us into that intimacy of relationship with God, of his flesh and blood, his whole being, saving us through his humanity, through his vulnerability, and through his love for us all. We come to his table, tired and hungry from our busy and often difficult lives. We come to praise God and worship and to be reminded of all that Jesus is for us. We come, in short, to consume Jesus physically in the bread and wine of his meal, mentally in the words of his thoughtful teaching, and spiritually as his presence nurtures our relationships with others and with God. As Lutherans, we believe that Jesus is truly present in the communion meal of bread and wine or grape juice. He is the true bread from heaven feeding our bodies and our souls, becoming human to be one with us, yet always divine, conquering death so that we might have eternal life with him now and in the future. Week in and week out, we are all welcomed to a banquet where Jesus is present in a very special and intimate way. We don't know or even claim to know how it happens, but we do know what Martin Luther had to say about it. God is present in, with, and under the bread and wine, and through the action of eating the bread and drinking the wine, we participate in a witness and a proclamation that Jesus is truly present in us, for the life of the world, end quote. Every time we take part in the Lord's Supper, we confront this mystery of Jesus' presence. The bread and wine is affirmed, proclaimed, confessed, and celebrated to be God in us, God with us, and God under us. This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. It is Jesus' promise given for us. And it is our privilege and, yes, even our responsibility, having been nourished 
with his flesh and blood to go from the Lord's table, from our worship, out into our community to act on behalf of Jesus, to share the living bread from heaven, to feed a world that is hungry, not only for a meal, but for meaning. Hungry not only for today, but for tomorrow. Hungry for the life that is given for you and for us all. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of the day is hymn number 618. 618, Guide Me, Ever Great Redeemer. I invite you to stand as you're able. <laughs> Shield those in the path of hurricanes and tropical storms. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, direct our leaders. Grant them courage to lay aside political grudges and renew their determination to address difficult conflicts. Guide them in the work of reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, tend to the wounded. Rescue those tormented by mental illness or mired in addiction. Ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to help all who are grieving 
and all those who suffer, especially those on our prayer list and those we offer now, out loud or in our hearts. God of your mercy, hear our prayer. God of beauty, inspire artists. Bless those whose visual and musical gifts enliven this assembly. Bless the creative work of poets, hymn writers, composers, painters, sculptors, and others that enrich our worship and daily life. God of your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, bring us to new life. Give us the living bread from heaven through which we abide in your love. And on the last day, raise us with all the saints to eternal life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with those of you. Of course, we're not all quite comfortable just yet, and perhaps even especially lately, shaking hands or offering a hug, but we can offer each other a sign of God's peace in other ways, with a wave, a smile, a bow, um, a peace sign. Um, and also for those of us who are here, and those of us who are watching online, we can the love and peace that God gives to us all. God works in us, through us, and our giving to support the ministries of our church, including the care of those in need. If you need assistance of any kind, please let Pastor Dent know. If you have a stable income and can give even a little more, we deeply appreciate your generosity. Let's be a blessing for others as Christ has been a blessing for us all. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very soul and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Very neat. 
And so we join our voices with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, singing praise to you.
Pat will be happy to run over to where you are seated and help. Everybody ready? All right. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat and be satisfied. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Amen. are 4.30 to 6.30, and the uh, uh, memorial service is at 6.30 right here. And um, on Wednesday is Lois DeLavo's memorial service right. at 4 o'clock at, at Carter's. Carter's right. Thank you. I didn't even see it, so thank you very much. Anything else? All right, seeing none, I invite you then to stand for the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is hymn number 542, we'll be singing verses 1 through 3, or stanzas 1 through 3, 
uh, A Living Bread from Heaven, hymn number 542. 